Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Thank you very much for joining me today. Could we see Nick Gage chasing Matt Cordona in Impact Wrestling? That would be very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Nick Gage losing uh, the GCW Heavyweight Championship to Matt Cordona uh, yesterday uh, in a death match. Uh, Matt Cordona got explosive heat, nuclear heat after he won the match. He was shell he was pelted with garbage and bottles and and um, just uh, just just nuclear heat really uh, after the the match was over and he won. Uh, and it was a pretty bloody match. It was a pretty bloody match. But now Matt Cordona is saying you know that he's the king of the death match. So he's the GCW heavyweight championship, heavyweight champion. So just Matt Cordona works for Impact Wrestling. Does Nick Gage, does Impact Wrestling have interest in bringing Nick Gage in to chase after Matt Cordona? Right now, Nick Gage is, is the hottest he's ever been uh, in, in professional wrestling right now. He's just showed up in AEW. He's got a huge match coming up against Chris Jericho. Uh, no disqualification match against Chris Jericho on the next Dynamite. Um, what else? He, he's calling out Kenny Omega. Uh, lots of press right now on Nick Gage. Would it be in Impact Wrestling's best interest to bring Nick Gage in to chase after Matt Cardona? They could even bring in the game changer, the GCW um, Heavyweight Championship, and uh, they can they could put that in play. The, the story the storyline could continue on Impact Wrestling, and they could even have a few matches on Impact Wrestling. It could be a hardcore match they could have. Um, I don't know if I don't know if Impact Wrestling would want to go with uh, with with a death match where there's pizza cutters and and glass and I mean I'm watching the I was uh, I was so clips I should say of of the match um, Nick Gage against Matt Cardona and, and they they're spewing each other through plates of glass <laughs> they're using pizza cutters to cut themselves and uh, I don't know if Impact Wrestling would want to go get that drastic uh, maybe a hardcore an old fashioned Tommy Dreamer style hardcore match between Nick Gage and and Matt Cardona, but I think there'll be a lot, I think there'll be a lot of buzz. There's a lot of buzz right now uh, with Matt Cardona and Nick Gage, and I think if they bring it to Impact Wrestling, it would I think it would give Impact Wrestling um, a lot of publicity. I know Nick Gage got um, quite a bit of publicity when he showed up in AEW. I don't know if he signed a contract with them or not. You know, probably not. This could just be a one-off match with Chris Jericho, uh, but he's had um, alter altercations with. Um, with John Moxley um, in the past as well, so maybe John Moxley gets involved in that match somehow and goes after Nick Gage. But uh, um, I, I, you know, I I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing it. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing Nick Gage showing up and, and chasing Matt Cardona. Let them have. Uh, I know they have a, a blood feud going. I know um, uh, it's it's. It, um, I thought it was real at first with, because they were really blasting each other on Twitter. But then again, it's, it's, it's professional wrestling. But they're making it seem as real as possible. as possible. And and it could get um, – I mean, there was a, an autograph signing with Matt Cordona. Nick Gates showed up at the autograph signing, went after Matt Cordona. Uh, so why not? Why not have him show up on uh, Impact Wrestling and go after Matt Cordona? Let them continue the feud on Impact Wrestling. I think, again, I think the fans would be, would be in for it. I think um, it would give Impact Wrestling – a lot of publicity, and um, again, I don't know if they would have the death match. I don't think you're going to see bottles and glass or anything like that. So that's 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 a little nuts. You know, I don't want to see anybody speared through a plate glass uh, window or anything like that. But the, which is what they were were doing on um, uh, whether the glass was real. Maybe it was. Maybe it was a uh, was it real glass? Uh, I'm not sure. But um, I don't know if they want to go the death match route. Uh, I mean, David Arquette um, and Nick Gage had the death match and, and Arquette almost had his neck slashed open. Uh, I think he did have a, his, his neck was nicked a bit, but uh, it, it could have been a lot worse. So I don't know if they want to go that route with the light tubes and Nick Gage jamming light tubes into somebody's head. I don't, I don't know if they back would want to go that route, but again, an old fashioned Tommy Dreamer style ECW hardcore match where there's a stop sign and or there's a kendo stick or something like that. So I think the fans will be for it. I think the fans will be up for it in Impact Wrestling. And um, could it happen? Of course, anything can happen in pro wrestling. I'd like to see it happen. Um, again, there's nothing. Uh, I, I didn't see any reports or anything like that of Nick Gage showing up in Impact Wrestling. It's just me saying, hey, it could be a good idea. And I, I think it would. I think it would be a good idea. Uh, uh, again, Nick Gage, Matt Cardona, a lot of buzz in, behind that feud. And um, bring it to Impact Wrestling again. 
uh, I think it would just uh, give Impact Wrestling um, a lot of uh, a lot of publicity uh, if um, they bring uh, Nick Gage it's impact wrestling to chase after Macrodona. Again, like I said, he's going to be challenging Chris, Chris Jericho and he got, he got a bit of a pop. He got a bit of a pop from the AEW crowd. And so, um, if, if the AEW crowd accepts Nick Gage, maybe, uh, impact wrestling could, maybe they can consider bringing Nick Gage in and, um, let the, let, let that feud with Macrodona carry over into impact wrestling. Okay. Uh, you, you might've read this report. Uh, but uh, Slammiversary, the ending of Slammiversary was scheduled to be a little different than it was. It wasn't supposed to be Jay White that was um, supposed to be showing up at the end of Slammiversary. It was supposed to be Andrade. Andrade was originally scheduled, uh, scheduled to make the Impact Wrestling debut. Uh, since fresh off his AEW debut, Andrade had a bevy of opponents ahead of him, including AAA Mega Champion Kenny Omega. Um, this is, although the two were yet to interact on AEW television, reports have emerged that Andrade and the Bill Collector were scheduled to have a face-off at Impact Wrestling anniversary this past weekend, but it did not happen. Uh, it says, I don't think, um, it says a plan was for, it says a plan was for Andrade to be in that spot, uh, JY spot, to, to build a program with Andrade, um, Managed by Conan against Omega, they were going to do a six man. Uh, so Andrade with uh, Conan was uh, were scheduled to show up at some anniversary. They were going to do a six man tag at the tapings: Omega, Gallows, and Andra and uh, Anderson versus Andrade and two others. The first singles match would still be in Mexico City, but in the end, it fell through because Impact and Andrade didn't come to money terms for the deal. Uh, so because they weren't able to you know come to terms on money, Jay White filled that spot, and as we all know. You know, Jay White showed up at Slammiversary to face off against um, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. And I think I think Jay White is a better option than Andrade. Uh, when you think about Andrade, uh, he might be the bigger name um, right now. But when you think about Jay White, think about the story. You know, yes, Andrade and Kenny Omega have a match coming up at uh, AAA um, at Triple Mania uh, for the um, for the Mega Championship, but Jay White, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Openweight Champion, leader of the current Bullet Club, facing off against former members of the Bullet Club who are calling themselves the elite now. I think that's a better story. And I think Jay White was definitely a better option. Because especially now, if um, um, because we you know, we had Finn Juice. Let's talk about Finn Juice. I was going to mention uh, Tama Tonga Tangaloa. But Finn Juice was there and Jay White... Having uh, his feud, he's a big match coming up with um, David Finley at New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, Reemergence. And I believe that's what it's called, but it's, I believe it's Reemergence, uh, August 14th. <coughs> and um, Finn Juice came out and Jay White took, uh, took out Juice Robinson. And Juice Robinson, David Finley, they've been feuding with each other. Um, I'm sorry, Jay White, David Finley, and Jay White, Juice Robinson. Uh, they've been feuding with, with each other in New Japan Pro Wrestling, so it's just a natural feud there. Uh, but for Jay White, like I said, the old like Kenny Omega, the Good Brothers, the old Bullet Club facing off against the leader of the new Bullet Club makes a better story, in my opinion. And again, if, say, they triple team him and he needs help, yes, Chris Bay is now a member of the Bullet Club, or he will be joining the Bullet Club. Uh, but say that he needs more help and he calls upon his buddies, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, to show up and say, just say... Uh, we get a match. Say we get Jay White and uh, Tamatanga Tangaloa, the new Bullet Club. Uh, well, Tamatanga Tangaloa, they've always always been a Bullet Club, but the, the current Bullet Club against the um, former Bullet Club. So again, Jay White, Tamatanga Tangaloa against Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, and it happens in an Impact Wrestling ring. That's that's an incredible story right there. That's a great, great story right there. Much better than I think anything that Andrade and Kenny Omega could uh, bring to an impact wrestling ring. And again, Jay White facing off against Omega and the Good Brothers happening in an impact wrestling ring is just amazing. Just amazing. It's it's just incredible. And the New Japan Pro Wrestling Impact Wrestling Partnership is definitely stronger than any partnership right now that New Japan Pro Wrestling has, in my opinion. Uh, you look at the partnership with AEW, you're not seeing too many AEW, um, New Japan Pro Wrestling stars showing up. <clears throat> at um, 
on AEW. So Hikaleo uh, came out, challenged uh, Lance Archer for the IWGP US, um, US Heavyweight Championship. Uh, but Hikaleo is nowhere in the league of Jay White in terms of popularity in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So again, Jay White was definitely, in my opinion, the better option than Andrade. So I think Impact Wrestling should be very thankful that they weren't able to come to money terms with Andrade. And uh, Jay White um, was brought in instead. Because again, in my opinion, and I think many of you might share it, that the story, again, I'm going to say it again, that the story, old Bullet Club versus new Bullet Club, that story is a lot more intriguing than anything I think Andrade and Kenny Omega could bring to an Impact Wrestling ring. My opinion. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North, heard right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.